General Motors, makers of more and better things for more people, including the Famous Five, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac cars, Chevrolet trucks, and GMC trucks present General Motors Theater. you, Jenkins. I get along quick. Please, Mr. Clegger. Mr. Cooper, is it off? Come here. You've not got my leave. Mr. Cooper is captain of the main top. I am master of arms. Now get along where you belong. Get below. Give him all this, you. Get along quick. No more talk. Up we go. Up. 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 <laughs> Black Claggett's rocking heart! Watch out! Ah, uh, Jenkins will sit like a cat! Claggett, sink him a lot for you four for sure! Uh, Claggett needs a knife in his belly! Well, the sooner the better, I say! The sooner the better! Huh? Step down here! Hey, you step loudly, boy! Stop your hat when an officer speaks to you! I'll teach you to touch a hat to a midshipman's coat, even if it's hung on a broom stick to dry! Aye, sir! Uh... All right, see this man assigned to a watch? And get him squared away. All right, all right. Carry on. <laughs> arms quick, I am. That's good man, arms there. You got the best of arms yet, Mr. Clegg? No, sir. Ah, oh, you lied to him, he's a nice fellow. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bud. Billy, if you like. So you're the new man who come off the merchantman today, eh? That's right. I hear it is said that you volunteered. I did. Why would anyone leave a soft berth like that for the Navy, baby bud? I... I... <laughs> the boy stuck us? Yeah. Come along, bud. Store your gear. Hey, no man. <laughs> you're in a bad humor today. Now tell me, why did you volunteer, Billy? I, I wanted to fight for my country. There's nothing wrong in that, lad. Tell us where you come from. Tell us about your home and mother, baby bud. Oh, there's not much to tell. I have no home and I have never had a family to remember. Oh, are you a kid, 16? No, 20, maybe. <laughs> you don't even know how old he is. What do you know? Ah, stop it, Jenkins. Well, the boy's trying to be friendly. What's the captain like? Ah. Hey, he's not as bad as some in the Navy. Not as bad as some of those at Spithead. Hey. Spithead, what's that? A little party the Navy had a year ago. A mutiny, baby, a mutiny. Why did they mutiny? Ah, Claggett's ten good reasons by himself. Oh, fine it was, that Spithead. With all the officers quaking in their cabins and the government trembling in fear of their stewards, we live. Handsomely done, young fellow, handsomely done. And handsome is as handsome did it too. What's your name? Bud, sir. William Bud, seaman. You look sturdy. What was your station on the merchantman? Mizzen Topman, sir. Education? None, sir. So, you come aboard with nothing but your face to recommend you. I am a seaman, sir. I love the sea. I've hardly lived ashore. We'll try you out. As of today, a new main Topman swings between sky and water. Stand up! It's 
Jackson, I know what I told you, so. All right, I know. Clear the way, man. Steady. Steady, Carrie. Gently, gently. Steady. Take them along to the sick bay. Nice thing there, there. Stop it. He sent him along. He killed him. Curly is really stuck in there. A murder of men. <laughs> Sir Arms? He oh, doesn't have a temple, sir. You'll come to attention when I bless you. This vessel sails under the Articles of War. Volunteer oppressed man, veteran seaman or recruit, you are no longer private citizens but sailors. A clue! Then I shall work into a weapon. What have you do, men? If I have anything to say with what goes on here, I warn you, there will be much trouble. Whatever happens, I will have no more, no more of this. Jenkins, what happened? One more attack. Mark Jenkins. I don't know. What's this? Your face, what's this? I have no bloodshed aboard this ship. Come on, speak up, man. I fell, Captain. I fell and cut my face. Now, to arms. You will excuse this man from duty until the surgeon tends to him. Aye, sir. Who are you? Me, Tottenham. Volunteer from Merchantman this morning, William Budd, sir. Let him speak for himself. Do you know anything of this accident? I, I, it's all right, boy. No need to be nervous. The man who was aloft, sir, when I came aboard a while ago, he looked sick, sir. This officer was there, too. You send the man sick a lot? I did not, sir. Well, bud, I hope you take the Navy life in duty without much regret. We go to fight the French. We'll need wits and hearts about us equal to the task. I will do my best, sir. I'm sure you will. Captain? The man who fell is dead. Carry on, Master Bond. I go. You've made a good impression on the captain, Billy Bud. You have a pleasant way with him. Stay away from Jimmy Legs, kid. He lives on hurting people. He's down on you already, lad. Down on me? Why, he's friendly to me. I've always been friendly with my shipmates. He couldn't mean to hurt you then. And of Almighty God, we commend the soul of our brother Enoch Jackson departed and commit his body to the deep in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
Oh, Sam, I'm Seymour. In the days of nights to come, you and I will not often have reason to be easy and talk. Sit down. Ah, sir, thank you. I expect the French will put us to our stations any hour now, sir. No drink? Thank you, sir. Good bit by Omen, Seymour. Omen, sir? Yes, the seamen we just buried. I think it was an omen of some sort. Melancholy prologue to this voyage. A tragic fate for the seamen, certainly, sir, but that's service. An accident. Now, it's unavoidable. There's more than an accident, Seymour. How do you mean? The man was sent aloft, sick. Well, the master of arms, contrary to my standing orders. But the new seaman implied as much, and the main top watch confirmed it. The master of arms lied to me. What action will you take against the master of arms? I shall do nothing at present. Court Marshal merely stripped him of his rank, but his, his order. Yes. Claggett's a valuable man, sir. We can't do without him. Things are, we stand on the razor's edge of mutiny. And with Napoleon at our throats and spit heads still sharply remembered, we can't afford anarchy in our racks. Claggett keeps excellent discipline below decks. Have you ever asked yourself how he keeps it, Simon? Oh, don't worry. Nothing will happen to disturb your valuable status quo for a while. I'll give him his head until some act puts him squarely counter to the law. Then let the law consume him. Why trouble the natural order to no purpose? Shouldn't we let it be? Mr. Man always shrug. Let things alone and drift. Flaggart is evil. Would to God that I could break him now. Smash every law to powder and be a man again. We must serve the law, sir. That's how we live. Live? <laughs> yes, men live and die. Taken by pattern, born to it, knowing nothing. But no man can defy the code by which we live and not be broken by it. You're the captain, sir. You must keep that code. True. So the world goes. Not wanting justice, but order. In order we cannot understand, the world demands it. Demands that at the back of every peacemaker, there be the gun, the gallows, and the jail. Claggart keeps that order. And so I need him. I'll let a man break that order, and he will be hold down. No open. None. Calm and peaceful. The sea is deceitful, boy. Calm above, and underneath a world of gliding monsters preying on their fellows. Murderers, all of them. Only the sharpest teeth survive. Oh, I'd like to know about such things as you do, sir. You're an ingenuous sailor, Billy Bud. Is there behind that youthful face the wisdom your virtue has need of? What, sir? Ah, never mind. Tell me this. Have you the stomach to stand and talk to me? Are you so innocent and ignorant of what I am? You know my reputation. Jenkins and the crew are witnesses, and you must certainly have heard them talk of me. Half the crew would gladly knife me on the back some night. No doubt Jenkins will try it. How dare you then? Have you not intelligence enough to hate me, to fear me as all the others do? Why should I be afraid of you, sir? You speak to me most pleasant when we meet, and though I've heard the men talk, you're not like they say. Nobody could be so. So? So what, boy? Brutal? Vicious? They're not wrong, you know. And you would see it too, but for those eyes of yours that light so kindly on your fellow men. There's a lot of things I don't rightly see, sir, but talking with you, I can see they're wrong about you. They're just ignorant like me. But please, sir, tell me something. Why is it you try to make us believe you? Cruel and not like everybody else. Perhaps it's you that's not like everybody else, Billy Bud. 
you leaving a wake of love wherever you pass. Charm me too, would you? Get away. Get away from your own. Hi. Ever tired of looking at the sea, old man? No. No, the sea is me. You move away from me as if I were some kind of stalking beast. You're a wise man in your senile way. You at least should see me as I am. A man who knows how the world is made. Made like me. <laughs> you know who you remind me of? Men Tuffman, Billy Bad. Mm, that smiling infant with no spleen or knowledge in his head. Aye. You have half the truth in Billy Bad the other. He can't see there's evil in the world, and you won't see the good, and you hate him for it. Well, I'll be off. Then go. Stay and talk this out. Yeah, there's little to talk. Who we'll find no rest for your night-facing mind until it comes to love? You recognize the hatred of your shipmates as an honor paid to a soul they cannot understand. You'll find contempt for human love is nothing but regret. Frenchman, get this patient, move! Turn with Act Two of Billy Budd. But first, here is Alan McPhee speaking for General Motors. You know, to most of us, a car represents a pretty big investment. And it's only natural that when you take your car in for servicing, you want to know that the men who work on it are specialists with practical experience of every last detail of your particular model. And that's why it's just plain good business to have your car maintained by an authorized General Motors dealer. You see, thanks to General Motors training centers, his mechanics are kept constantly up to date. Across Canada, there are 10 of these service training centers. Now, here's a typical one, with a typical class of skilled mechanics sent here by dealers to study the latest mechanical advances being built into General Motors cars, to be ready for whatever maintenance and service problems they may meet in their jobs. Courses are divided into three stages. Here in the first stage, Students learn the theory behind the design and function of each part. Now, in this class, using visual aids, an instructor explains the action and direction of oil flow through the gears of an automatic transmission. Since all training is based on the idea that the best way to learn is to do, in the second stage, an actual transmission is provided for each pair of men to take apart and reassemble. Under the skilled guidance of the instructor, they get the perfect knowledge of the intricate mechanism that is necessary for the successful maintenance of your car's transmission. In other courses, this same care is given to the study of electrical systems, axles, engines, and all the many parts these men will have to work on in their day-to-day -day jobs. In the final stage, a car is brought into each classroom for repair and overhaul under actual shop conditions. The students themselves remove, work on, and replace each part just as they would if it were your car on the hoist in your dealer's service department. Each month, over 500 mechanics pass through these General Motors training centers, returning to their jobs with knowledge vital to themselves, but even more to you in keeping your car always in perfect running condition. 
So you see, when you buy a General Motors car from an authorized dealer, you benefit in two ways. Not only from the greater quality and value of the car itself, but from the continuing maintenance and service of specialist mechanics who have trained at one of the General Motors training centers. Tangled with our first French frigate. It's a pity we missed that one five nights ago. Well, Bud, how do you like us? Our first awesomeness has worn off. It's a, a bustling world, sir, and bigger than I'm used to. But my mates give me a hand. Why, even the master at arms, he's good to me, too. See him in the Navy demand discipline. But it need not be a harsh one. In some ways, I envy the man who dances across the tops. It seems to rule the ship in the sea below. Yes, in many ways, I envy you your stamps. You can trust me, sir. I do, boys. All right, why you do this? Aye, aye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bud have the first. He deserves it for his action during the chase last week. I'll speak to him myself. Hey, he'd like hearing it from me. Uh, Lieutenant Ratcliff, would you be good enough to see the Bud presents himself in my cabin on his first relief? Certainly, sir. Mr. Cooper! Oh, no, I have a son. I'd hope for him, uh, one like Bud. I know what you mean, sir. And yet, there's a quality in him that troubles me. A naked truthfulness it makes him vulnerable. He seems so dangerously perfect. Aye, sir. He's a fine boy. He's a good force for order of aboard this ship, certainly. I hope his charm's contagious. I wish we had more like him. <laughs> One such lad aboard, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, men cannot stand much perfection. It's a disease we stamp out at its first rash showing. Yes. That boy is in harm's way, I feel it.
Yes, sir, I have to do it. He drew this knife on you too, no doubt. Yes, sir. You lied badly. I've been waiting for Jenkins. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't look at some little metal that don't concern you. I've been expecting it. Well? Get up! I waited for you, Jenkins, night after night. And when the moment comes, this interfering innocent force falls you. I do not thank you, boy, for cheating me of the pleasure of his punishment. I'm going to get back to your quarters. Baby saved you and you are angry, eh? <laughs> squeak. I need squeak. understand you. But you better go where you belong. It's too down. Guinea's more your bill. And it's more where that guy from for you. If you don't go where you belong, I'll toss you over the rail and go on. Get! You seem to favor the main deck, Billy Bud. What are you doing topside at this hour, ma'am? I found an the guardsman in our part of the deck, sir. Against regulations. Strange hour to police the deck. Name the after guardsman. But I couldn't see clearly, sir. Don't be a fool. Speak up. Accuse him. Well? I can't say, sir. Even to protect yourself, you would not turn the finger of guilt on a fellow man, is that it? Very interesting to me. Sweet innocence. Sweet goodness. Get back to your quarters where you belong. Hey, sir. Glad you saw his mutinous behavior. Mutinous behavior? Uh -huh, not hoodwinked by his weak excuse. It's quite clear to me now. What else would he be doing at this hour if not fanning rebel tempers like his own? True madness. You believe so? Uh -huh. I, I believe so. But I warn you, if pushed too far, goodness must strike against evil, and Billy will so strike. Spilling's over about plug brain. We shall see, old man. Master Arms? You stand long watches. What is the explanation? Sir, may I reserve my explanation for your private ear? Leave us. Well? I'm going, Captain. Lieutenant Ratcliffe, stand within hell. Aye, sir. Well? What is it you have to say to me, Master Arms? Quite lately, I have got to know the sign of some sort of movement secretly afoot. During my rounds this night, I have seen enough to convince me that one man aboard, at least, is dangerous. Come to the point. Who is this man? Sir, I deeply feel the cruel responsibility of making a report involving such serious consequences for the sailor mainly concerned. But God forbid this ship should suffer another mutiny like Spithead. Never mind that. You say there is one dangerous man. Name him. William Budd, captain of the Thorntop. William Bart. The same, sir. For all his youth and appealing manner, a secret, vicious lad. How vicious? He insinuates himself into the goodwill of his mates, so that they will take action for him should it come to that. 
With your pardon, sir, you note but his fair face. Underneath lies a man trap. Right, sir. Aye, sir. Find but the fault of them. Aye, aye, sir. You come to me with such a foggy tale, Master at Arms. Wait. Watch what you speak. There's the main top end for false witness. I understand, sir. Oh, 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 sir. Come here, bud. Stand there, Master Arms. You here. Now, Master Arms, tell this man to his face what you've just told me. Certainly, sir. I say this man, this William Budd, acting out of some inner angry resentment, breeds in the crew a spirit of mutiny. I say this man threatened his officers with murder and was bent this very night on urging other men to act concertedly in mutiny. Speak, Bud. Speak, defend yourself. It's all right, boy. You have time. Perhaps, sir, he has nothing to say. Kevin. Remain there till I summon him. The divine judgment of Emma Miles. Struck dead by the angel of God. And I must judge the angel. Can I save him? Have I that choice? Just a moment, we will return with Act Three of Billy Budd. You name the power, V8 or 6, Chevrolet's got it. You name the transmission, Chevrolet's got that too. You know, whenever a car is an outstanding bestseller, it's always interesting to look for the reason. Now, one of the big reasons for Chevrolet's massive popularity this year is the choices it gives you. It's literally a case of, you name it, Chevrolet's got it. Now, for instance, Chevrolet, alone in its field, gives you a choice of power, V8 or 6, plus a choice of three great transmissions in every model. Now think what that means. If you've shopped around at all, you've seen the very low price of the brilliant Chevrolet 150 series. Well, even with those low priced models, you can order the flashing new Turbofire V8 or the famous economical Blue Flame 6, plus any one of these three transmissions. Super Smooth Power Glide, the most popular and trouble-free automatic transmission in the low-price field. New Touchdown Overdrive for really terrific gas savings. Or Heavy Duty Synchro Mesh for the easiest gear shifting you've ever enjoyed. Now, I really want to stress that choice because, as you may have found out for yourself already, some manufacturers offer you no choice of engines and a choice of transmissions only in higher price models. But let's take a closer look at this magnificent new Chevrolet from a power point of view. Now, if you're looking for sizzling action, for instance, there's this super power package with a big four-barrel carburetor that boosts the Turbofire V8 to 180 horsepower to give you performance that's absolutely unbelievable in the low-price field. Like life a little calmer, but power to spare when you need it? Well, for you, there's the 162 horsepower Turbofire Valvin Head V8 with a mighty 8 to 1 compression ratio. Or if you prefer a 6, Chevrolet has it again. The famous Blue Flame 6 with 40 years of Chevrolet's valve and head experience behind it. So you see, right down the line, you get exactly what you want in Chevrolet. All the power you could ever need, plus the 12-volt battery for extra power and surefire stacking. All the performance you've ever wished for, and all wrapped up in styling that's setting new standards of beauty and low-cost driving. The thousands of Canadians will agree no other car at the price can match Chevrolet for youthful style and carefree performance. So this spring, 
If you want the most driving pleasure, the most luxury in performance, in fact, the most car for your money, the man to see is your Chevrolet dealer, and the time to see him is tomorrow. What are you going to do, sir? Isn't this lie, the very act of the Mastodon that you were waiting for, to let the law consume him, as you said? Claggett would have suffered at the yard arm if Billy hadn't killed him. As he would. But by due process of authority. But has prevented that and turned the law on himself. You can't condemn the boy for answering with his arm for lack of words. The motive was clearly justified. Aye. But what's the act? Captain, this master of arms, you knew him for a liar. A vicious dog. Even a dog is obeyed in office, Claggett was authority. An authority is an evil. The dog knows. But he commands and no man is its match. Not Bud, nor you, nor I. Well, strike us down and rightly if we resist it. Rightly? We should thank God. The man's dead. The world's well rid of that particular filth. Our life has ways to hate its evil in. No one must go above its orders, even the innocent. So that's tyranny, not law. Yes, I thought that once. But without this awful tyranny, what should we have but a worse tyranny of anarchy and chaos? So about this man of war. The world is little. Oh, if I were a man alone, manhood would declare for Billy. Then put your strength behind Billy and let him go. I'm an authority, not a man. When I think that I could have watched him grow in comely wholeness of manhood. Convince me, for God's sake, Seymour. Try, try to convince me that I'm wrong. Oh, Billy, Bud, what have we done to you? Come in. You have been appointed members of a court-martial. Convened under extraordinary circumstances by Captain Vierne, of which I am the senior member. Mr. Ragnar, Mr. Wyatt, you take a place. Sentry, bring in the prisoner. I declare this court open. You both know why you've been summoned hither. Aye, sir. And I know that Bud would not kill a minnow without good reason. So what did the quarrel start? I'd rather you do not express yourself on the subject until after you've heard the evidence. There's only one witness, Captain Deer. Enter. Sentry stand outside. You may sit down. Captain, would you be good enough to give us your account? I was speaking not as your captain, but as a witness before this call. Earlier this evening, the master of arms detailed to me an account of mutinous statements expressed by Bud. Bud tried to reply, but he could not frame his words. Instead, he answered with blows, and his accuser fell. It was apparent at once the attack was fatal. That is all. Thank you, sir. But you have heard Captain Veer's account. Is it or is it not, as he says? Captain Veer tells the truth. I have eaten the king's bread. I am true to the king. I believe you, boy. If I could have found my tongue, I would not have struck him. But I had to reply to his foul lie. And I could say it only with a blow. God, help me. I understand, Philip. I understand. the cost of Clackett's hatred for Bud. Well, the master at arms made his world in his own image evil. He kept the image strong by others' fear of him. Billy could not imagine such a nature. So nothing but a lonely man. A strange, but a man still. Nothing to be feared. So Claggett, lest his world be proven false, planned Billy's death. The final reason is beyond my feet. I was thoughtfully spoken. There is a mystery in iniquity.
William Budd. If you have anything further to say to yourself, say it now. I have said it all, sir. Sentry, we'll move the prisoner to the upper compartment. All right, sir. Do anything to say, Mr. Rector? Oh, yes, sir. Clifford was killed because Bud couldn't speak. In that sense, Bud's a cripple. You don't hang a boy for that. Mr. Wyatt? If we contend him, it is the same thing as contoning the apparent lie the master at arms clearly told. I can struck him too. If we convict Bud, do we not acquit the liar? Not a mere lie told for fear of the consequences. But a cold-blooded lie designed to kill a man. Aye, sir. Well, I'm ready to acquit him now. Good. Then we can reach a verdict. Of Gentlemen. I've been a witness at this trial. I must now speak as it's convenient your politics. With your pardon, sir, senior member of this court, may I ask if you act as our commanding officer or as a private man? As convenient authority, Mr. Seymour, I, I summon this trial, and I must now review its findings and approve them before passing them on to the Admiralty. Aye, sir. That is your right. No right! Which of us here has rights? It is my duty, and I must perform it. But has killed a man, his superior officer. He has killed him. That is the fact. And the mutiny at Spithead was a fact. And whether it was justified or otherwise, it must not come again. And if it should appear that our decisions here come out of weakness and fear, you may create an anarchy throughout the fleet. We are not free to choose, as we would do if we were private citizens. We are officers, helping to defend our country against a powerful enemy. As officers, we are concerned to keep the ship effective as a weapon and the law. Our special law makes it very clear what we must do in such a case as this. In time of war, at sea, an enlisted man strikes his superior officer and the blow is fatal. Why, the blow alone would hang him. The men know this. And if it question is acquittal. But sorry, it's twice as dangerous to hang the boy. The men love Bud. If there's a mutinous temper in the crew, condemning Bud would surely set it off. Aye, sir. Yes, that is possible. Whatever step we take, the risks are great, but they are ours. That is what makes us officers. If our motions should produce an, a mutiny, then a mutiny comes. But if we shirk our duty, what shame to us, what death to discipline. I can see that, Captain. But this case is exceptional, and pity if we are men is bound to move us, Captain. So am I moved. Much more than you might know. But we cannot have warm hearts. Between heads, it should be cool. Here let's see the heart. The female in a man weeps like a woman. She must be ruled out, hard though it may be. Still hesitant? Conscience, perhaps. A private conscience moves you. Aye, that is it, sir. How can we contend this man and live at peace with ourselves? No one ever promised you that peace, Lieutenant. To what do these stripes we wear to test our allegiance? But to our country, sir. I like it. Our official duty is to our country. And we resign our freedom when we put this on. When war is declared, are we, the fighters, consulted first? Does that deny us the right to act like men? Does it deny us our conscience? I say we fight by order, by command of our superiors. And if our conscience approve the war, it is only coincidence. So it is with all our acts. Our duty is lying in this, that we are servants only. You want to make us murderers? What is this vessel you serve in, Wyatt? An ark of peace go counter gun. But that is war, sir. This would be downright killing. It is all war, Ratcliffe. War to the death for all of us. You see that, Seymour. But this war began long before our time. And it will end long afterwards. The original evil is war. And the evil compounds itself. These wartime laws leave no room for morals here. But, sir, must... Must the penalty be hanging if we convict that? Yes, Rector. The penalty is precisely prescribed in the articles. Sir, 
Could you stand Bugs' murder on your conscience? Hold your tongue, Wyatt. What do you want about it? Sit down, sir. I will not get a hand to hang a man I know who is innocent. My blood is not cold enough. I ask to be excused from sitting on this board. You know what you're saying. Sit down and hold your tongue. Wyatt! When you put on that uniform, did you perhaps say to yourself that you could defend your country up to the point that the enemy guns came too close to safety? No. Nor did you reserve the right to turn your back on your duty when the case at hand was too harrowing. Can't you see that you must first strip off that uniform you wear? And after that, your flesh! Before you can escape the case at issue. Decide you must work. No, you can wash your hands of it. But someone must decide. We are the law. The law orders us to act and shows us how. Do you imagine that Seymour or Ratcliffe or I would not save this boy if we could find a way consistent with our duties? A quick bud if you can. Show us how to save him without putting aside our function. Or if you can't do this, teach us how to put by our responsibility and not condemn ourselves. Can you do this? Speak, man, speak. Show us how. Save him, Wyatt. And you save us all. You recognize the logic and the choice I force upon you. But do not think me pitiless, thus demanding sentence on the luckless boy. I feel from as you do. But I think there is a grace of soul in him that will forgive the law we bind him with and pity us, stretched on the cross of our choice. You save me if it's right. You sent me. Is there any hope for me, Captain? Billy, what hope is there? Just tell me why. I only want to understand. How young you still are, Billy. Now I can tell you this. Nothing is lost of anything that happens. I have given you the judgment of the world, its deadly constraint. A length of hemp and a yard arm. I have done this to you. No one else. Just can't get the rights of all this. There's not much right, Billy. Only necessity. You and Craig are both men's compromise with good and evil. And both of you must pay the penalty. Most of us find out early about good and evil. Your middle course. I mean, it's better to be like that. Better as this world goes. Do you think Claggett knew it would come to this? He knew that he would kill you and he died to gain that end. But if you'll trust me, Billy, he'll not win entirely. How could he hate me like that? The world we breathe is good. Love and hatred both. But hatred must not win. Claggart is dead. Now I'm to hang. Doesn't that show that the laws are wrong when they can't choose between him and me? Yes. Yes, yes, it's all wrong. I don't know, Captain. I never was a hand to 
wonder about things. But now I think there's a kind of cruelty in people that's as much a part of them as kindness, say, or honesty, or... or... I guess I can't find words, can I? There are no words. They're both prisoners of deadly forms made to break us in the Nothing can overcome them. Except forgiveness. Can you forgive? I trust you, sir. Can you show me it's right, my being? It's almost dawn, lad. There's no time for either of us left. Go, take the morning. God knows you have a right to it. And when you're on the yard arm, pray for those that must make choices. Callum, take that into your charge. Aye, sir. Goodbye. My son. Station Commander, support! All oh, men, Mr. Topper, President Kirk, sir. Green, the the Fund, the Code for sir. Carpenters, Gunners, mates, one absentee. All hands will stand by for punishment. Where's Billy? He wasn't in his hammock when they piped us up here. Uh, what's up? Early morning is hanging. Hanging? Hanging. Uh, they send you up the ratlins out on the yard arm. You put a rope around your neck. You jump off and you hang yourself. Hey, help! 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 Ship's company present to witness execution, sir. Bring forward the prisoner. Attend Ragnip. Bring forward the prisoner. Aye, aye, sir. Sentry, bring forward the prisoner. Proceeding at the court martial held aboard HMS Indomitable on the 8th of August 1798. In the case of William Budd, Fort Topman, Royal Navy. While attached and so serving in the aforesaid vessel, he did on the 8th day of August 1798 strike and kill his superior officer, one John Claggart, Master at Arms. <laughs> Therefore, the court sentences the aforementioned William Budd, Fort Topman, Royal Navy to die by hanging on the first watch on the day following these proceedings. By authority of... Prisoner, have you anything to say? If you have nothing to say, when the drum roll is sounded, you will proceed to carry out the sentence of the court. To what? knows the rights of this better than you or me. God bless Captain Veer.
In just a moment, the names of our players and a word from General Motors. In power and performance, in ride and handling ease, in stunning beauty of color and style, this 55 Chevrolet is stealing the show from the high-priced cars. In sheer money's worth, you'll never get more than you get in this great car. Once you've tried this Chevrolet, there'll be no doubt about your choice either. So see your Chevrolet dealer tomorrow for the demonstration drive of your life. you know is safety month but safety consciousness is a year-round necessity so be sure not only to drive safely but to make a point of going into your dearly dealers regularly and having your car thoroughly safety checked remember when you check your car you check accidents well this concludes the present series of general motors theater which has been produced live in canada by canadians our aim has been to help develop the finest Canadian acting and writing talent. We hope we have achieved a measure of success. To all who contributed so much to the series, whether on the screen or behind the scenes, and to those many members of our audience who took time to contribute constructive comments, we say thank you. We hope that you'll be with us again next fall when General Motors returns to the air. Good night and good luck from General Motors. Billy Bud has been produced for General Motors by the CBC.